Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here today. Today's topic is how to fail with software testing and I have to give some kudos to someone in the community and Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. This person is Richard, Richard Bradshaw. Thank you, Richard, for inspiring me of doing that video. And Richard was doing the talk or giving the talk how to fail with test automation on the 2023 edition of the Azure Testing Days in Potsdam, Germany. And I was also in the audience. I was attending the conference. And the moment I saw this title, I said, hey, I need to go to Richard's talk and to listen to him what he's talking about test automation and he did a really great job i hope that this talk is at somewhere available <clears throat> online on youtube or other channels uh, made by the organizers uh, or maybe richard is doing something on his channel as well on this topic but it was a really fun talk to listen at the same time it was like really yes he is completely right and i have seen it so many times in companies how companies failing with automation and while I was sitting in that in that talk, I was pulling up my, my video idea list and saying, okay, I need to do something similar, um, but not copying uh, Richard, of course, but would like to give kudos. And that's why I thought like, hey, take the video to a much a bit higher level and talk about how to fail with software testing in general. And here we are, that's the video. And I brought a couple of slides uh, for you today um, about topics that I have seen in companies in my career. I mean, I'm now in the com community for 14 years now, working in 14 years in software development now, and I've seen many mistakes made by, by companies, and that's why I would love to share them with you. And I would love to hear your fails, your, 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 your problems that you have seen in the community. Leave them in the comments below, that would be great. Also leave a thumbs up, leave a subscription as always to support me, spread the video in your network to gather more information about the fails in the community, the fails in companies and how we can make software testing a better place. So thank you, Richard, again. And now let's dive into the fails of software. Hey, sorry for the little break of the main video. Today's video is sponsored by Squish, an excellent tool for functional GUI test automation. Squish provides efficient and agile automated GUI testing with multi-toolkit applications. As you can see on the screen, it has tons of powerful features to tackle any testing challenges you and your development team might have. Here are some features that I think are most beneficial. You can record, edit and execute tests with Squish without a steep learning curve. It's very, very intuitive. The tool offers extensive integration options. It's fully compatible with CI-CD system and version control system. It's streamlining your workflow for rapid deployment. Another example for its versatility is that it's available in whichever scripting language you use, from Python, JavaScript to Ruby, just to name a few of them. And it's especially good at testing applications on multiple platforms. Whether you're working with Java, Windows or more, Squish has you covered with powerful property-based support. There are a lot of materials on Squish online, but I recommend trying out this interactive tour so you can see firsthand how Squish works. You really get a good general idea now and the feel of the tool. I would recommend you to check the video link down below to take your tour on your own and to learn more about Squish today. And now back to the main video. Testing. So the first one, of course, is the biggest one, how to fail with software testing is don't do any testing because if you don't do, if you don't test, you won't have any issues. Yeah, that's the thing. Obvious, right? I mean, if you test, you find something, you have problems, you have things to tackle. If you don't test, all good. We can move on, move to production and that's it. Yeah, 
what can go wrong, right? I mean, that's the most stupid thing that I've seen in companies. They don't have testers, they don't have people with a quality mindset in place and they have to learn the hard way that this is not the best way to do, right? So first, first mistake I've seen. Uh, the second one, how to fail with software testing is don't do any test planning. Yeah, if you really would like to fail, don't plan anything. Open up the browser, get your mobile device, whatever product you're developing, and just do some testing. Tap around and do your things, right? Yeah. That's also a misconception I've seen in the, in, the, in, the, in the development world that, hey, everybody can test. It's so easy to test. Just tap around, click around, and that's done. Mm. It's not the case. Do proper test planning in order to succeed with, uh, with testing. Use, for example, one page test plan or use a mind map or use a function map, whatever you have in your in, in place and then do some planning. It doesn't need to be like a 20, 20 page boilerplate uh, documentation in order to start your test planning. Start simple, easy and lean and then go ahead from there. Don't do any test documentation. Yeah, it's also a thing, right? I mean, who has... Who, uh, who needs to document anything, right? I mean, everybody hates to write documents, hates to document something. And yeah, but some test documentation is required in order to give some feedback, being a bug reports, issue reports, asking questions in the team. It's some sort of documentation, giving feedback, leaving comments. It all pays into the documentation um, flow of your, of your environment. So do some test documentation. Again, don't overdo it, just take it easy. Yeah, and then you see what's going to happen. It will be good things will happen. Uh, don't do not create any test strategy. Again, something that is really tightly connected with test planning, test documentation, test strategy. Everybody hates to write a strategy because it's it sounds so huge. Okay, I need to investigate. I need to in, um, invest weeks of my time to write a test strategy and then to document it and to make some paint some pictures, share them with the developers and so forth. No, that's not what I meant here. It's like take a lean approach on your test strategy. Do test strategies for a specific ticket. Do a test strategy for a specific sprint for a roadmap, part of the roadmap, and take a lean approach. Make it mind maps, Miro boards, other graphical boards that you can use in order to outline your strategy and then make it transparent to the team. With that, you succeed. If you don't do it, you will fail. Don't talk to the developers, customers, or any stakeholders. And I promise you, you will fail as well with testing. Who, who needs to talk to people, right? Just sit in your tiny little empty dark room somewhere in the basement and do some testing and don't share anything with that. With that, you will fail. Of course, you should not do it, right? So talk to people, use your communication skills in order to improve the testing, the testability, the, the quality of the code and so forth. Don't do regression testing. Yes, who needs that? Let's build, ship and go and do the thing all the time. Just ship things, don't do regression testing. The old stuff is going to work. Ah, nobody needs to do it, right? Mm. I know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be funny here, right? I mean, of course you have to do regression testing and that's why automation comes into place to set up some automated regression tests for you to save the time to focus on the more um, yeah, quality related topics, more challenging topics that you have to tackle as a software tester. But if you don't do regression testing, it's likely to fail. I mean, I've been in situations where developers told me, yeah, I just uh, increased the library version from 1.0 to 1.5. Nothing is going to change. You don't need to test. Let's just do it. The complete system failed by just incrementing, uh, incrementing the, the library version of something that we introduced. Of course, you have to do regression testing. Yeah? Don't plan for any automation. Yes, watch Richard's talk. He's, it's a great one. Uh, check if he has put the slides somewhere. So don't plan for any automation and you will fail, of course. And because automation is an important little tiny piece in your quality strategy. It's nothing that you should completely 100% rely on. Say, okay, let's automate all the things and we don't need to do anything anymore. That's also wrong, but rather plan it in, a, in advance, plan it accordingly, and then you can benefit from it in the long run. Yeah, But don't plan anything, you will fail with software testing. Test only on the UI layer of your product. Backends, APIs, forget about them. If you have that mindset, you will fail with software testing because software testing is 
looking at the complete holistic system that you have end to end like what databases we're using, what APIs are we relying, what's the tech stack, what cloud technologies we're using, what frameworks, what programming language. All this comes into, into place when we think about software testing and the quality of the system. And of course, I've seen especially younger people, juniors, relying on UI because, yeah, it's easy, right? You see something, you can click, you can tap, you get some fast feedback on the system, but just the tip of the iceberg, right? I mean. The underlying architecture is much more complicated and much more interesting to test and to rely on. So focus all on other parts as well. Yeah, check only the happy cases. No one will ever do weird things. Of course, yes, that's nobody's going to do that, right? That's an edge case. We have heard it multiple times, thousands of times. And if you only check for the happy cases, of course, you will fail with it. The first, the, the moment a user hit the system on production, the person will do something weird and something is going to happen, right? The system is crashing, weird error message showing. So think of edge cases, think of workarounds while you're planning your testing activities as well. Um, how to fail is never do any non-functional testing such as security or accessibility testing. Nobody will do that anyways, right? We don't have people with disabilities in our customer base. We, uh, we have credit card data. They are saved. They're somewhere saved in a database. That's okay. That's secure. We trust our colleagues. You will fail with it, for sure. Because the non-functional requirements are so important to keep in mind these days, especially security, accessibility. Usability is something that many companies have in their minds because they would like to have a usable product. But when it comes to security and accessibility, they just look away and they just say, okay, I don't see it. I don't have anything to do here. And that's, that's a mistake. So invest in security accessibility testing as well in order to, success, uh, to succeed. If you would like to fail, forget about it. Yeah? Test only on the production system because this is the most stable system that we have. Yes, we will fail with that one. Of course, if you test only on production, what can go wrong, right? I mean, should be obvious. We should not never test only on production. Of course, we can do some testing on production to verify some bits and pieces after the launch and stuff. Everyone is doing that. But relying only on production is, is dangerous because of the data, the system, the architecture that you're using and so forth. I mean, imagine using production data to test and run your automation and then changing the database entries or deleting a database. Have fun with that, yeah? so. Do this if you would like to fail. Uh, no need to plan any test data. Just use the production data for testing. Yes, of course. Just use, if you have a test system, plug in the production database and have fun with it. Mm, yeah. I think I, I should not say any more, right? I mean, this, this, is be, this will be a biggest nightmare, <laughs> to be honest. If you mess around with production data and testing, you rather check for a new job. Right? So never do that. Never, never, never. Um, another thing how to fail is never ever share your findings with your team. Of course, you have bugs, you have critical issues. Ah, it's okay. No one will do that. I'm a tester. I'm the weird, uh, weird stuff, right? Yeah, not a good idea. You will fail with that as well. Share everything that you see, everything that you have that, that feels weird on mobile devices, especially if you use it with your real device, with your fingers, and it feels not good, tell them. Communicate more the, the more the better, yeah? And then you will succeed, otherwise you will fail. And then, what else? Start your testing at the end of each development cycle and never before. No, don't do it before. That's that's not a good idea. I mean, imagine you start early with testing, you have even more work to do. Nobody likes to work anyways, right? So don't do it, just let the developers develop. The product managers did do the things before and you test at the very end, one day before release. Yeah, what can go wrong? Hmm? Not good. So of course, start as early as possible. Use shift left testing mindset. Go early as possible in order to bring value to the team to, to make the, the product better. And, and to shape it in a, in a good way, yeah? So, there's so a lot of things, how to fail with software testing, and I bet there are thousands of more statements that I could bring in that slide deck today and in this video, but 
there's more of course and I would like to hear your thoughts like what do you think how can companies fail with software testing leave it in the comments below send me messages I can put the blog post around it because I think there are like a lot of companies out there doing a lot of weird things with software testers have the wrong perception of software testing and we all together can fix it so let's do it together share it with us share it with the community happy that you're here today leave a thumbs up leave a subscription share it with your network the video would be really happy to support me and i wish you all the best for today good luck in finding issues and see you soon and bye bye